Good morning, everybody. It's been a while since I've flipped a few cards, which I'm going to do in a little bit. But I wanted to come on specifically to talk about vibration in the by way of our thoughts. And I want to clear up some misconceptions that I think people might be getting concerning this. Our bodies are run by our minds. Our minds tell our bodies what to do. And we think that we it's an automatic response that when we open our eyes in the morning and we get out of bed and we do various things that we do to get ready for work, whatever, that it's because we're alive and it just happens. But that's not true. The mind, which is connected to our subconscious and conscious mind, it's two, tells the body it's time to wake up, tells the body it's time to get out of bed. And this is why when we get older and we experience different things like forgetfulness and stuff like that, our mind is getting older and our bodies are getting older. But the thoughts that we have and the memories that we've created in our brains are there. Some things that have happened to us throughout our lives get put in a compartment up in here. Experiences. And sometimes something will happen that will trigger a thought or an experience or a memory. So we're not just our bodies. We are our thoughts. And when we speak and make a sound, that sound has a vibration. But that's not the only thing that has a vibration. When you walk, there is a vibration. Even when you tiptoe, there's a vibration. Now, I'm going to take you out of that and into the woods. And I know this because when I first met my husband, I went with him a couple times hunting, even though I don't hunt. But I went with him and just kind of sat in the woods at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning for the sun to rise. And one of the first things he said to me was, be very conscious of your steps. Because deer can hear a hundred times better than you. And they can also feel the vibration on the earth. This is why animals, before an earthquake or before a tsunami or before a, a, a huge hurricane, have a sense they can feel the vibration. So I have been paying a lot of attention to vibration. I, When I go back and listen to my videos, which I do on purpose, I have to, because in order to get them up, I have to put them in a video editor and I have to listen to them. I don't have a choice. And sometimes I go, oh my gosh, I, I don't even like listening to the sound of my own voice 
because it's not always nice. It's very strong or it it almost has a forceful tone and I don't like that, but that's who I am. And so I'm learning to accept that part of myself rather than fight against it. But by the same token, when you hear someone talk about vibration, there are some people out there that are picking that apart. Like, like if, if there are those of us that talk about vibration and frequency and getting into that alignment, like, like we're not living experiencing human beings or we're, we're out there to, to pass this message on to others to help them because we want to get rich or something. It's, it's not that way at all. It's not that way at all. At least it isn't for me. I have had experiences in my life, as you have, where I have learned things not from other people, okay? Back in uh, 2003... I was getting messages, 2002 even, and I was not on social media. I was not on the internet. I was not looking stuff up on Google. And I was receiving messages from God that were very deep. Now, I need to specifically talk about this. Because there are people out there, some very uh, religious people, pastors even, theologians even, that would like to tell me that the messages that I receive were not from God. Baloney. Baloney. How is it that I could receive messages, write them down in a book, and then later on, create a file in my computer of all those messages so that I could read them and understand them when I was out on my porch talking to God. It, it's not the God of my understanding. It's God. I, I'm, I'm not even going to say God of my understanding because the God that I believe in created the universe created the universe. I can't create the universe. Okay? Even though I know that there's a good possibility that my soul was there and your soul was there and all the souls that inhabit this planet were there. And there, yes, there were other beings there. But I am not going to sit and have a discussion with somebody about malevolent and benevolent beings. I'm just not going to do it. Because as soon as I start doing that, okay, I've lost my focus. Because the God that I serve that I believe in, that I love, and I know loves me and loves all of you, that created the universe, that omnipotent power is not going to allow anything harmful to enter this space or your space if the focus is on that omnipotent power power, that loving power, that unconditional, unconditionally loving power. And that is what is so damaging to people. Now, we live in a physical world. We live in reality. 
This is not an illusion. I am sitting here. I am creating a video. You can see part of my environment. These are physical, tangible things. I do not dismiss reality. And I don't think that you and whatever you're going through at this time, good, bad, or indifferent, you are dismissing reality. But faith or having faith and having a belief system in this omnipotent power I call God, you can call God infinite spirit, universal love, Because to me, God is universal love, universal unconditional love. <sighs> Having the belief and the faith and the trust in that does not mean you are delusional. And it does not mean that you are negating the fact that you are a real human being with real human problems, with real human experiences, in real human pain. But when Jesus came to this planet, Jesus healed and one of the phrases that Jesus said was, your faith healed you. Now, does that mean that Jesus did not have a concept of reality? Jesus had a concept of reality more than we do. Because there were people after Jesus. They wanted to kill him. They called him a false prophet. And there were other prophets. And there were other organizations and institutions. So when somebody comes on the scene that has a message that is teaching you and me how to navigate through life by raising our awareness and our consciousness higher to tap in to God, angels, the dimensions that hold the vibration that is also here on this planet, by the way. As above, so below. Because what is now was once up there or out there and had to be created. So, this is not woo-woo, unless you want to believe that it's woo-woo. Our realities are rooted and grounded here on this planet. But our thoughts and what we allow to come in to our minds... And how we process what's in there is unique and individual to every single person on this planet. And those of us that have messages, or those of us that channel, hopefully are asking for the divine, omnipotent power that created everything 
to form a protective shield around us so that the messages that we give you will not harm you. Now, I haven't even touched on the receiving of. We as individuals have perceptions. And we as individuals receive information differently. Now, talk about vibration. Somebody could say something to me that strikes me in a very funny way. And somebody can say the exact same thing to somebody else that would get offended. This is what I'm talking about. I have no control over how my videos are going to be received. And as soon as I put them on YouTube, I let them go. I let them go. And I would imagine that others that have gone before me do the same. I'm not going to get uptight about it. I'm just not. Because the people that need to hear what I have to say will hear it. And the people that don't won't. And that's awesome. That's awesome. Because we are not for everybody. We're not meant for everybody. That's how alignment works. Like, some people like to go to the mountains and some people like to go to the ocean. The people in the mountains don't like the ocean. They don't want to get sunburned. And the people at the ocean don't want to have to climb up to the top of the mountain. And that's okay. Here's the deal, folks. The interesting thing to me Actually, it's it's so awesome. When I received the messages that I received and I created my Oracle card deck called Light Fragments Oracle, A-U-R-A-C-L-E, those messages came from a place at a time when I was really hurting. And those messages were meant to uplift me, to give me hope, to give me faith, to, to keep me on my journey, to keep me on my path. And I felt that sharing that was important to help others. This is the goal. Now, if somebody writes a book or if somebody becomes a motivational speaker, or somebody has received messages and they're sharing that with the masses. Does that mean if they become famous because they're helping other people, does that mean that their message in essence when they received it was evil? Of course not. Of course not. But by the same token, that message may not be received in the same way by everyone. And that's okay too. Because like I said, the mountain and the ocean are two different places. And the people that want to be on the mountain may not want to be on the ocean. And the people that like to go to the ocean may not want to be on the mountain. So timing is everything. And there are people that channel messages that are on a space-time continuum that is not rooted right here in reality. And 
meditation is just that. Meditation rises us to a different space, a different focal point. Think of an artist. I'm an artist. And I remember when I, when I took um, my class on perspective, there was a, a focal point in the distance. And all lines went to that focal point. And from those lines, we drew horizontal lines to give that image perspective. So let's just say that focal point is time, space, reality. It's above the reality here on earth. And the horizontal lines that create the tangible object that we see is here on earth. But that focal point over there where all the lines were drawn is above this tangible place where we feel, we see, we touch, we experience in our physical bodies. I feel that everything has its time. Everything has its time. And we can no more create by nature a life being formed. We can plant a seed, but we don't do the actual creating. But by the planting of the seed, we are a co-creator in that plant that produces fruit. Somebody put the seed in the soil. Did you do that? I did that. And we don't have total control of the outcome. We can try our best. And we can visualize how we want it to turn out. But we don't have 100% control of it. And what I mean by that is we plant seeds in the very early spring for tomatoes. And as soon as the plants get to be about six inches high, we put them outside in our garden. And those plants grow and we tend to them. And all of a sudden come in July, we start to see little baby tomatoes. And then all of a sudden in August, the tomatoes are getting bigger. And by the end of August and in September, we start to have fully ripe tomatoes. But some of those tomatoes are not perfectly round. They have weird shapes to them. And some of those tomatoes have been eaten by a critter or a tomato hornworm. We do not have total control over that. Okay? We've been part of that process. But for every single experience that happens, we become a co-creator of that experience. And that co-creation does not exclude crying. It does not exclude feeling completely overwhelmed. It does not exclude feeling, I can't do this. It is, does not exclude the pain and the suffering that each individual person is going through. So when we talk about raising our vibrations upward, we talk about being tapped into that supreme force that knows everything. 
knows everything and knows more than you that the suffering and the pain that you are going through is going to be that experience that your soul needs. Now, I cannot go to that space of suffering that is inflicted by other people that I do call evil. Okay? I, I'm not going to go to that space. It is not going to help you. It's not going to help you. What is going to help you is to tell you that there is a God, a creator of all that is, that created angels, that are to come to your aid to help you and assist you in your time of need. And you will not be abandoned. You will not be abandoned. At some point, there is a breakthrough. I can't tell you when that is. I cannot tell you when that is. That would be wrong for me to do, but I can tell you at some point, there is a breakthrough. At some point, you will feel and you will know and you will experience. I'll give you an example. I went through this time where I literally cried every single day for two straight months. I cried myself to sleep. I cried when I got up. I cried working at my job. Thank God that nobody was there to see me struggling. And I allowed this because I was in a gap where I felt like I was between two rocks and I couldn't go to the left and I couldn't go to the right and the only place I could go was up. The only place I could go was up. And so I allowed my spirit to connect up. And at the end of the two months, approximately, there was a sense of subsiding. There was a sense of feeling release. There was a sense of feeling relief. There was a sense of omnipotent stillness that I had never felt before. It was a peace that surpassed all understanding. And I know that you can get to that point. But I don't know what you're suffering I just know that you're suffering. And I do know that there is a sweet spot within it that you can get to. That I know. So friends, I'm going to pick a couple cards for the beginning of this week. And I didn't mean to go on and on about this. But it's important for you to know that when when I talk about or others that that channel or have a connection a tapped in connection um and there are many and it can be you too it is you actually you just haven't sensed it yet but you can and you will, and you need to ask and trust that God is not going to leave you or forsake you. That is a promise. So when there are people talking about all these evil entities and this and that, I just, I can't go there. I won't go there. Because the God that I believe in 
says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Never. And that intelligence, call it what you want, superpower, will never leave you or abandon you, ever. You might feel that way, but you will not be abandoned. And I believe that there are, we live, we live in duality. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. We're talking about the physics here. So do you want to think about what's bad all the time? Or do you want to think about the possibilities and the goodness and the love and the unconditional love that is ready and waiting for you to receive? Because it's there. Do you know how many ancestors, guides, spirits, relatives have gone before you and are with Source right now looking at you? ready and waiting to assist you? There's a lot. Okay, so I'm going to shuffle my cards here. And I know this is going to be a long video, but it's necessary. It's necessary because, you know, there's always going to be a critic. There's always going to be a critic. There's always going to be somebody that goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I do it myself. <laughs> I do it myself. Okay? So, if this video does not resonate with you, that's okay. I just want you to know that you're loved. But if this video resonates with you, then I am grateful and appreciative of that. And I thank God for that. And I thank God that I can be here. I really do. Okay. So. Let's see what the cards have to say. Okay, so this card is the Pleiades card. Now, this deck here is, uh, it's Work Your Light Oracle by Rebecca Campbell. Now, I love, I personally love this deck because I do believe that a lot of the messages that a lot of us receive that that are that are in tandem i mean it's it's amazing it's it's amazing that 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 i could receive a message and you could receive a message and somebody in australia could receive an, a message and it's the same message on the same day around the same time i mean you can't make this stuff up it is real but this message here uh is pleiades so there's there's if you feel a connection to the Pleiades, the, the Pleiades uh, planets, if you feel that you have a connection to uh, the Pleiadians or that you might be a star seed um, and, and you have, you know, you just love that kind of thing, there's a double mission in this card. The double miss mission is channeling for one reason, and that is to uplift humanity. That's to uplift. That's what the channeling is for. The channeling isn't so, you know, I, you know, uh, you can be afraid and have fear. There's healthy fear and there's unwarranted fear. Healthy fear is to protect you so that you don't fall off a cliff somewhere, okay? Keep walking and fall off a cliff. Looking at your phone. That's a healthy fear. That's like 
pulling somebody back off that cliff. Talk about cliffhanger, right? Pleiadian star seeds channeling for the sole purpose of uplifting humanity. All channeling should be for the uplifting of humanity, for the betterment of humanity, for the interlocking of that vibrational focus to bring you to a place of light. Okay? Of light. And a person can have light and feel light in pain. It is possible. So that's the first card. The second card is don't dim to fit in. Do not dim your light because somebody out there is saying, Oh, they're just doing it for this, or they're just doing it for that, or they just want other people. Don't dim your light. You have something to offer. Every individual on this planet has something to offer. And let me tell you something. If you're in the depths of despair, do you want somebody that can be there with you and that can be present with you and that can share with you and that can relate with you? And that can help you and say, I understand how you feel. I understand how you feel. Maybe take your mind off things a little bit. Maybe lift you up a little bit. Or do you want to be with somebody that's in the depths of despair with you? Because where are you going to go? Continue to stay in the depths of despair. And some of that is necessary. Like grief. Grieving the death of someone that you love dearly or a, a pet. Grief is necessary. But staying there is not good. Take all the time that you need, but pay attention to how long this time is going on. Ten years... It's a long time to still be in that. And they they say that grief has no time limit. I'm only going to speak from my own experience. If I were still in the same grief that I was in 29 years ago, I probably wouldn't be here because I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. Progression. And moving out of and up is where God wants us to be. Whatever you do, do not dim your light to fit in with groups. If you are in a group and they're going to make you feel bad because you're a happy person, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, and there are people in there that are jealous of you, and I don't even want to put an, a, a label on it. Or they don't like the way you're doing things or what you're saying or how you're acting. Or even the fact that you have an opinion. Because we're supposed to have opinions. We just don't, we don't have to be forceful about it. But you can say, well, I, I don't resonate with that or, or I don't see things that way. This is how I see things. What do you think about that? I mean, you can have a conversation, but if, if, if you're in a place where you're being pushed down, get out of it, get out of it, get out of that or, or, or remove yourself for a while and then come back. Maybe things will change, but don't dim your light to fit in. Don't. And the third card is. Trust your path. Trust your path. If you knew you would be supported, what would you do? If you knew <clears throat> that all those billions of light beings up there 
that have gone before you rush down to you at this very moment to support you, what would you do? That's the space you need to be in. The naysayers, they don't need to be around you. You can love them from a distance. <clears throat> love them from a distance. Don't engage in the negativity. Just love them from a distance. If you knew you would be supported on your path, what would you do? Now, here's some reality for you. <clears throat> you have a job, and that job brings you an income and, and some financial security, but you really want to do something else. Don't leave your job. Not unless you have buku money that can support you for however long you need to be supported. Don't leave that job. Don't run right out there and start doing it. You need that income. You need that security. You need that foundation. But little by little, practice what it is you want to do. Make it a side job. Make it something that you love. Or it is something that you love and just do it a little bit here or doing a little bit there. If you like to play music, say you like to sing and play the guitar, try out some coffee houses. Okay, just put a, put a can out there, donations only. Try it. Try it out. Go to your day job and on the weekends, go play at some coffee houses. Okay? So... I love you all. I hope this message helped you today. It's it's a really long one, but I felt impressed because sometimes when you're not, when everybody else is falling apart and you're not, people will look at you like there's something wrong with you, and there isn't. Sometimes you need to be the one that's not falling apart. Sometimes you need to be the one that is grounded in the knowledge and the unconditional love of God to be a support system and a positive influence for those around you. And if, if the people that are around you don't want to hear that, then be present. And if they don't want you to be present, then leave. But don't buck up against it. Don't buck up against it. It's the bucking up that creates the chaos. I love you all. Talk to you soon. Be well. Be blessed. I hope you have a wonderful week. Please subscribe to my channel to get this information or messages because I do channeled messages and I'm, I am not going to be shy about it anymore because I've been receiving them since 2002. So that's 20 years and I did it in, in, in the quiet and I, I didn't share them and I'm going to share them now. And if you want to know what they are, please subscribe, like, and also share my um, channel with others if you think that this will help them. Okay? I love you. Bye-bye.